every CHP office will install these car seats for free. Um, before I forget, I just want to th thank Jennifer for go ahead and setting us up together because this is something that the CHP does uh, for everybody because on, on an average, about 80 to 85% of these car seats are installed improperly. And I had no idea, I'm not a parent, so I had no idea how this works until I went to the class and they said it's gonna be a week long. And I said, a week long? Is it really gonna take a week long to figure this out? Yes, sir. Can we close those doors? Sure. <laughs> The bear's gonna get a little cold. Make sure nobody steal it. Can we put an alarm on that there? No problem. So I started uh, taking the class and there is a lot to know. And if I, hadn't, if I hadn't taken this class, I would have no clue how to put these things on because all these car seats are different. And then there's forward face and rear face and you have no idea. And then you look at the booklet and the booklet's usually this big and then you go, to the owner's manual of your vehicle and try and figure that out, it's a pain. So this is why we do it. This is, the CHP wants to make sure the kids are in there safe. Um, so I think we should start off with... Um, Over the, uh, there's, there's two ways you fit in a car seat. There's a thing called latch. Latch are, are these portions right back here. And we'll show you where they basically hook into. Get this little metal bracket to show you later, they're in, they're in the car. Most cars only have them on the side seats. Some models always have it in the middle. Okay? You got so you can install okay. using a flat system, which we'll go over later on. Or you can use a seat belt, but you'll never use both. We get asked all the time, hey, can I start with the seat belt analog system? And the answer is no. So if you come to the Hire Patrol, we're going to give you our recommendations, what we're told. As soon as you drive away, we hope you keep with those recommendations. Um, so if you remember that, it's either the seatbelt or the latch, not both. Last thing is, mom, you're most guilty of this. You like to decorate the car seat and put all the comfy stuff in there. We're not gonna recommend that either. You bring us your car seat all decorated with fuzzies, it's got all the padding in here. We're gonna take it out. If it doesn't come with a car seat, we don't recommend it. Main reason is because it's probably not fire retardant. It hasn't been crash tested. And the other thing is, is once you put Junior in the car seat and you've got all that stuff on them, it's gonna affect how well they're strapped in the car seat. Okay, so we're gonna go over all that stuff today. So just remember those, those things just in your head right now, either latch or seatbelt, not both, and no extra fuzzies and padding or mirrors or anything on the car seat, okay? Um, so we'll start with that, and then Aaron can go over the makings of the seat, we'll go over how to strap them in first, and then we'll put the car seat in. Most of the car seats, like I said, they're all a little bit different. Um, this is how to uh, tighten it down, press the little uh, latch here and pull it out. If for some reason you can't figure it out, and like I said, they're all different, you can just look in there. Um, when we talk about tightness, Eric brought up a good point. Um, you have the child in the car seat. If you can pinch an inch right here, that means it's too loose. We always suggest if you get the child in there with a nice snug seatbelt how it's supposed to be, then you're not gonna have to worry about it later on when now you're gonna have to cinch it down. And they get used to it, they jump in there, it's almost a little game, they can put it all together. Um, the seat belts are a five point uh, harness system, just like the, uh, re the professional car drivers use. Why is that? That way you can spread out the impact of the force on the children. Small kids like that one back there, not a lot of neck muscles. So this is why we put them rear facing uh, when, we, when they first start doing it. We have a little chart there. Uh, what we recommend is look at the uh, car seat. It says right on here, when used for rear facing, uh, you can use this up to 18, uh, this is 40 pounds. We recommend as long as you can keep them rear facing, it's the safer. Then we get uh, parents coming in, well, wait a second, now my kid's legs are up against the seat and what happens if we get in an accident? We tell them we would much rather, and we've talked to surgeons and they've had the crashes, they realize that it's a lot easier to fix a, a foot or an ankle uh, if you did get in a bad accident than it is to try and fix a spine or neck. So when the kids don't have that neck muscle, the kid will put this in the car is at the nice 45 degree angle. You have five points 
to displace all that energy if the car does get in a crash and it spreads it all out. We have the three point, usually we have you know, the seatbelt here and then on our hips, five is better. So we wanna keep them rear facing as far as you can. Uh, these straps, when the child is rear facing, we want at or below the shoulder level. So as your child gets bigger, you might have to move the straps up. We're gonna show you on this one right here. Most of them are like this, um, but you, you might have to look at your owner's manual to see it might be a little different. There's one Braco car seat where you adjust the strap, it's not like this. It's a manual one where you pull up, pull up a little lever and you can pull it up and it'll adjust manually. We saw two of those today, it's the first time I've seen it. Um, so like you said, all car seats are different, but as your child grows, when he means by the shoulders, at the very beginning, you're gonna want them probably at the lowest level because you're gonna have probably a little seven to, maybe for some young lucky moms, maybe a 10 pounder, all right, seven to 10. <laughs> so you're gonna want those down here. That's a little guy, little girl. And think about when he talks about their necks, the way they taught us was, you put an orange on top of the toothpick, the toothpick really is their neck. So kids suffer a lot of neck injuries in car accidents they're not restrained right in their car seat. So what Aaron was saying was the seats are designed to spread the force of an impact out across the entire seat with that five point harness and that's why kids today, our numbers are really starting to go down as far as the injuries and death, thank goodness. So to adjust it, just remove it off there. You're gonna bring it out, bring it to whatever point you want and put it right back in, you're adjusted. It's that simple. So um, we'll take it out of here and then just stick it back in the next one. And we want to add or below, you don't want it above. If it's above, you've got too much play for them to move around. Um, another guide you can do when you strap them in, how I remember, put your two fingers back there. This clip right here, we want that right at the armpit level. When you're done tightening it, that should be right at the armpit level. And if your two fingers are back here, when you tighten it, tighten it until it's, tighten it until it's snug in the baby's chest. As soon as your fingers are snug against your chest, slide them out, that's how tight you want. Okay, because if you've got finger space, they've got plenty of breathing space in there. A lot of moms are worried about that. They can't breathe, it's too tight. They can breathe, they'll be okay. They're going to be their eyes out for the first little bit. You'll know they're breathing. Um, so that's, that's, that's what Aaron was saying earlier. That way, when they get older, they're used to that tightening. What we see is kids start fighting it. When they start getting that brain working, they start realizing, I'm going to take this thing off. It's too tight, it's uncomfortable. That's what they start doing. So get them used to it. That at a little tiny infant age, you won't have a problem. Um, until they get to be 15 and they're at the I'll come to me then, I'll tell you about my father. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so that's how we adjust these. Put this one back. Um, so just uh, what we are, so you guys have an idea. Yes, ma'am. Maybe that's when you maybe might have to tighten that a little bit. And if you can, I don't know if she would cooperate, but we can put her in here and then we can kind of see, you might want to go up to the next one. Just make sure um, the reason why we don't have it so much higher, say if the shoulders are here, you're going to have a lot more slack here. So the closer it is, we want, we want this child strapped into this car seat. So most of, most of the collisions um, that occur are front end collisions. So picture your uh, daughter right in here, uh, or your son, and you get in a collision. This seat is, like Eric said, designed to take the impact, and so it's gonna come forward. So the kid isn't leaning forward, the kid is facing this way. If you had the child here, you get in a front end crash, what's the neck gonna do? We've all seen, you get in the accident, you've seen those crash dummies and stuff like that. So that's, that's the whole thought process. Most of the, uh, most of the crotch straps, if, for some reason, your kid's getting to that point where this is just too snug right there. This is real easy. All you have to do is twist this, pull this through, and then twist this and pull this back through. And that does it. And again, they're all a little bit different. If yours is different, just look in the, uh, the manual and you can figure that out. Um, Shut the barning off. 
There it is. Hey, no Barney until the seatbelt comes back on. It's amazing how quickly the seatbelt back on. Okay, so make sure you put, use it as a game with them because they're going to test you. They're going to want to get out of the seatbelt. And it's tough on us a lot of times when we're driving on the freeway and you see Junior climbing around the back seat and Mom's freaking out, screaming, get in the car for the last five miles. And we pull over and she gets a $360 ticket because the child's not in the car seat or the seatbelt. So make sure you start working that really at an early age. They're messing with it. Shut off the barring. Whatever you got to do to make a game out of it so they know that it's in, they stay in their seatbelt. Okay. A lot of good information just on the outside of every seat. This one was manufactured uh, in uh, December 14, 2012, and it'll expire uh, December 13, 2018. That brings up to a good point, is you want to make sure you know the history of the car seat. We have people that come in and say, I bought this at a yard sale for 10 bucks. Go ahead and throw it in there. That's not safe. You want to know the history of the seat. You want to make sure that it wasn't in a collision. If it was in a minor collision, uh, they do suggest that it's okay, but to check it out, make sure there's not stresses or cracks or white. Sometimes it'll turn white and that's just pressure on the plastic that could possibly uh, fail the next time if you do get in a serious crash. So we, we were just talking about this before. Everybody always asks us, hey Eric, what's your, what's your favorite seat? What are you gonna, what are you gonna suggest? You have to figure that out what's best for you. Go down to Baby's R Us, go down to whatever store, look at them, see how easy it is. Look on some reviews. Um, as a highway patrol, we can't tell you, oh, go and get this seat. Um, but see what the most popular ones. See how easy it is to get in your car um, and also um, getting the child in and out of because some of them are a little bit, little bit more intense than others. So take a look at those. More information right here, uh, like I was talking about earlier, uh, you'll see if you have two of these, if this says forward facing and rear facing, you know this is a convertible. We suggest these if you want to save some money. If you go out and buy a rear facing only, and it's only till 40 pounds, or uh, what do they usually go up to? About 40 pounds. So then you're going to have to go out and buy a forward facing one. And then you're going to have to go out and buy the booster seat when they get that age. And all the, on, the, on that uh, handout that I have has all those on there. But um, if you get the convertible, you can use this up to 40 pounds, and then you can use this one up to 65 pounds. So that's a way to save you guys money. Um, and then it also shows um, the weights and um, the size here. It's going to be plus and minus. Does it, does it take care of your kid for you for $1,000? Yeah, but it wasn't So we've got, uh, got how it goes in. So basically, let's undo it. Baby's in. Okay. Start here. Buckle them up. Get them in here. And then here's your tight and loosen. Remember your two fingers. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Fingers are tied up against that chest right there, and then adjust this here, goes up and down. You want it right at the armpit level, you're ready to go. Okay? So baby's in. So when you tie it back down there, what, what keeps that from loosening in it? There's a locking mechanism. We'll pull this up. There's a little metal button right here. So when you push that forward, it allows you to loosen it up. And then when it's pushed forward, it's locked. Yep, it won't go back so in. Look, okay? They're not coming out when they're in there. All right. So All right. So you guys just go ahead. The last thing I'll show you before we put the car on the seat, if you use the seat belt, and you should do this with your, your yeah, older kids when they get older, 
So if I have my seatbelt here, you see I don't have it pulled out all the way, you have a lot of play in it. I can pull on it. Now if I get real hard, then it'll lock. That means it's an impact. On a car seat, we don't want it moving around because while you're going over speed bumps, it's not going to have that hard impact. So that means you're loosening your car seat while you're driving. So if you use a car seat to install, you're going to pull your seatbelt all the way out. Once it's all the way out, you can feel it ratchet back in because now every time I barely pull it, it locks. Okay? So test your car. That's the kind of car seat that you're going to want to install. Or that's the easiest way to install the seatbelt. So pull it all the way out. That's the biggest mistake parents make. They don't pull the seatbelt all the way out beforehand. And so they have too much play in their car seat. Okay, so you'll see us tonight when we install this. We're going to pull this thing all the way out first, snap it in, and then we'll have plenty of just don't go into labor tonight. We are EMTs, but we didn't bring our bags. Okay. You're the EMT. <laughs> all right, so any other questions on, yes? We suggest. Depends on height and weight. Okay. Sometimes. Um, yeah, look at the side of the seat, and then we suggest um, within an inch or two inches from the top. Okay. That's when you, they need to go up to the uh, next size, and then that's where we go into here, where it says the weight and also the height, because some kids get really tall, some uh, weigh a little bit more. So then you might you might want to look into the boosters, and then they have the backless boosters, you know, where there's just a seat that you put in there and they can put um, the seatbelt on. The good, good gauge is when you can put the seatbelt on, Eric made this lock for me, um, but when you can put the seatbelt on and it goes where it's supposed to, a lot of kids, because they're a little bit shorter, have it here. You don't want to slam on the brakes or get in an accident and do that. So that's the, that's the best gauge right there. When they can sit in there, the hips back against the seat right here and put it on, then that's fine. And uh, we have, um, un unfortunately, they keep on changing. First it was four and 40, and then it was six and 60, and they keep on changing. So we have that on there. Um, it's eight or four, uh, four feet, nine inches. That's when they can get out of car seats. And that's when um, they should, Exactly, there you go. The reason why it keeps changing, everybody is wondering why, why is it, okay, why does it keep changing? Why, how are we gonna keep up with this? Because the technology, as Eric alluded to earlier, is better. They're starting to realize, I don't know if anybody, just I think it was last week they started talking about, now they're gonna start putting in, they're realizing after all the data and their uh, experience in these uh, crash tests that they have, the kids are getting uh, hit from the side, and so they're gonna put side impacts on there. You guys heard that. So as a higher patrol, we always suggest everybody put it in the middle. That way, if you do get hit from either side, that's even extra safe for your kid. Um, so if you come down to our office, we're gonna say, all right, we're gonna put this in the middle. We're gonna put this in uh, this side right here, just to show you guys, because it's a little bit easier for you to see. You guys just uh, had your kid, you're gonna come into our office. Pretend this is in the middle right here, um, but we're just gonna show this. Uh, we have uh, what's called, you know, the pool noodles. Everybody's, everybody's seen them at the pool where you can spit water through them. And we can use those because what, what you want to get is the 45 degree angle. Most of the car seats, um, really hard to see on this one, but all the car seats that you have, you're either going to have a little bubble, you're going to have the red and then the green and the red, and you want that angle. Exactly. Exactly, and that's what you do. This one, because it's a, a donated seat, it's just this level right there. So what we're, what we're desiring, it's really hard to see because they do the same color, but um, we want this, when we have the car seat installed, we want this level toward the ground. So that's what we're trying to get at. So if we, um, for some reason, aren't able to do that, that pool noodle can lift up on the back and get to that 45 degree angle. So we got the car seat in here. As Eric uh, explained earlier, I'm gonna bring this all the way out. And the best part of these uh, seats, if I can just turn this around for you real quick, is it says belt path here for rear facing. Boom, put that, slide it all the way through. You need to go the forward facing, belt path here for forward facing. So most of this is on the outside of the seat. Some of them aren't, 
and that's where we come in to play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide this over to Eric. I'm on top. So now we, this, uh, the seatbelt retractor, I switched it into the mode that'll lock. And then what we're gonna do is slowly just tighten this down. So, um, dads, if you can, or moms, use your weight to get in the seat, get in the seat, get your knee in that seat. So you're gonna see me in there, I'll actually almost either sit in that seat, or I'll just put my knee in the seat, because then it's gonna have 150 pounds, maybe a little bit more, maybe, <laughs> in there, putting it down so we can really Wait. tighten up that seat belt. <laughs> yeah. So you can really tighten up that seat belt because when we, when we show you later, we don't want that seat, once we pull it at the base, to move more than one inch left or right. So the tighter you can get it in, the more secure it is. So that's why we'll see me sit in the car seat. Okay. Did I say uh, in the car seat? He did. Yes. Yeah. Put my knee in the car seat. Installing the car seat. And when, we, and when you test it, you want to test right here at the base. You don't want to test, a lot of people come in, oh my gosh, look, this is more, moving more than one inch. We want to test right here because that's what's going to hold it down. So as Eric's pulling this down, I'm slowly tightening this. And, and it is, that's what you want to do, is get this as tight as you can. And so what you're going to do is lift up and check it. That's in there pretty good. You're good. And you're going to have to, you're going to, have to put weight in there. Most of the time, we get two people out there and put in there, because you want your kids secure as, as tight as you can. Um, a lot of people ask us what this is. Yeah. Most car seats um, have this. Some don't. Um, I know Brightex, we, and uh, what's the other one that I said? The Omni something. Um, if you read the actual uh, manual for this, you have to attach this. What this does is we are actually, we're, yeah. We're missing a piece, but what this does is um, when you bring this down here, it attaches to the lower seat. And when you get on there, all you have to do is tighten this down. So this, if you can think of the rails on your seat, it just wraps around there. You hook it on there. And what that does is that keeps the seat from going up and down. Some seats are designed where they don't need it. So read your manual to see if you need that. Yeah, the front seat. Some have eyelids in there. Some you actually have to put. Um, so if this is the rail on the seat, we wrap it around there, uh, wrap it to itself, actually to itself, and then clip it on there and then tighten it down there. Right, yeah, I don't see this. Yeah, it doesn't have it? OK. Uh, but like I said, each one are a little bit different. OK, so um, let's undo this. All right, now, now you get to the point, little Jimmy is now 40 pounds and we need to go forward facing. As Eric talked about earlier, the easiest way to put these things in, this is called the latch system. Has you guys seen this before or heard about this? This is real easy. Um, Eric says it's the easiest way. You're gonna see, it's easy to install it both ways. I think some guys just like the latch system better because it's two quick ones. You can sit in and pull it, and it seems it'll be a little bit quicker. Um, but in, in reality, it's, it really is just as easy as the seatbelt. Do both of them use the latch system for both directions? Uh, yeah, four right. Four right. Four latch should be forward facing and rear facing. But usually, okay, latch will only go up, check your owner's manual on your car. A lot of time, your owner's manual will dictate how many pounds that the child can be able to still use the latch. Usually, it's right around 42 to 45 pounds. Some cars will say that 65 pounds you can use latch. So after they get a certain weight, you have to switch to seatbelt. So when you get your car seats, get comfortable with installing it, both latch and car seat, okay? I'm sorry, and seatbelt. Last point is that um, this, this vehicle is an awesome, awesome vehicle. Wish I could have. The latch is designed, it's on the both side seats, it's not in the middle. There's very few cars that also put it in the middle. So if you are installing your car seat in the middle, you can't use latch if the middle does not have its own latch system. You can't use the left side latch of that, of that seat and the right side latch of this seat. 
You understand what I'm saying? So right now there's four latch points in this back seat, but there's room for three. So you can't split the latch from this seat over here and this seat. It has to have, the seat has to have its own two. There's two for this seat and then there's two for the outside seat, not for the middle. And a lot of people come in and they just say, well, I can use the inside of this one and the inside of the other one. The reason why is because they haven't been crash tested that way. So until it's crash tested and approved, they're going to tell, tell us not to do it. Okay, so um, you're going to give us a ticket if we have it installed that way. <laughs> no. We're, gonna, you know, we're, 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 we're not going to we're, we're get a ticket for that. Now, if it's so not in the car seat, yes. But yeah. Actually, no. So when you come to us, we'll fix it for you and we'll show you why you can't do it. But now you know, you can't do it. So if you use the latch, it's got, if you're going to, uh, in this car, if you came to us with this car, first we compliment you for having the car, and then we tell you, uh, we would recommend a middle install, so we'd be using a, a seat belt on this one, okay? Now, if you're lucky enough to have twins, you have two car seats. Flip a coin, one gets this side, one gets the middle. That's the way we would do it. Okay? Whichever kid you like the best. <laughs> um, if the, if the, if the, if the seats won't, if the seats won't fit, if they won't allow for one to be next to each other, you may have to have two side install. Okay, but we're always gonna try to do the middle first. If we can't do it, then we'll move to the side. And that's, and that's kind of what I was talking about before. You have to fit what's for you and your car and what your seat. Some of these car seats, you're gonna go see probably that $900 one is like this wide. You can't put two next to each other and you're not gonna put three for sure. So you're gonna have to put one on this side and one on that side. If you do, if you are putting one on the outside, we always suggest on the passenger side. And the reason is, here you are, you got your baby bag, you park along the street, cars whipping by, and you're trying to get the car out and traffic, we don't want you getting hit. We definitely don't want the baby getting hit. So uh, if you have to, put it on the uh, passenger side. Uh, we were talking about this also before. Um, a lot of moms will tell me, okay, I understand you said you want it in the middle, but here I am bending over in my back and hurting and stuff like that. Tell them, this is the safest spot. You get hit from the side. We don't want, we, we've been to accidents before. We don't want to see that happening. So we, su we suggest, okay, sit down, take the kid out, put them in your arms and then get out of the car. You can do that. That's just another way. Okay, so back to- Yeah, I was just curious why not Again, it's the, it's the way the forces are spread out over the seat, and the crash testing said it used more. They, so, they are actually doing more um, crash testing and study to figure that out if it's better. Because normal people think, okay, two's better than one. <coughs> Two officers, well, maybe not, not in this case, but um, you would think that, but like. I was installed in the middle, he was on the side. <laughs> <laughs> really short bus, all right. <laughs> but the, but. <laughs> but I think you're, you're yeah, you're going you're gonna to start seeing some more. Yes, ma'am? Is there any particular type of latch system you know, for the front or any particular type of car seat that makes it easier to get the child out in the case of getting in an accident with the car being on fire? No, all, all car seats have that five-point harness. So um, it, easier, in my opinion, no. Um, if, if you're in the accident, most of the time we're going to recommend you stay in your car anyhow. I mean, most people think, oh, i got to get out of my car, and that's usually the most unsafe place to be. So usually, unless the car is on fire, which is very, very, percentage-wise, very minimal. Car, we have very few car fires at a car accident. Usually people think it's on fire because the radiator's gone, so it's got smoke in there, or it's the airbag powder. We suggest leaving the child in the car, especially if you're on the freeway, keep them in that car. We don't want you outside the car. And keep them in the car seat. Um, fireman? Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see you raise your hand back there. Nobody's paying attention. Um, so the, the firemen will get in. The firemen usually want to remove the child out because they've been in an accident. There's certain safety precautions we take with their neck. So if you're taking them out of that car seat, you're really kind of risking more injury to them by taking them out. So leave them in the car seat, okay? Unless, like I said, there's a vehicle fire or something just perfect. You've got to get the baby under that. Okay, so um, real quick before I forget, um, owner's manual, you look in here, uh, supplement uh, restraint system. Airbags, child restraints, front seat, rear seats, all this information is in here. All you have to do is, okay, child restraint, 13, turn to page 13, and it'll give you the information. This will give you the information when you look in here that it says latches only on the outside seats. Car manufacturers should put it on all three, but then that's extra charge for them. So that's the reason why they don't do it. Um, up uh, until they're 13, they can't ride in the front seat. Everybody should know. 
Yeah. That's our recommendation. Yeah. Wow. Again, because you know what? Again, their, their necks are developing. What they say, and if you talk to doctors, especially, especially orthopedics, they're going to tell you that that neck is that orange on that toothpick until they're about 13. So you put them in front of that airbag, and also that airbag comes out. Yeah, the airbag helps them, but if it hits, the, it hits a nine year old in the face, you're going to see some neck injuries come out of that because that airbag comes out as a four. If you. Yeah, 13. If you guys haven't seen an airbag deployed or see the force that comes out, it's, it's powerful. And we see people with black eyes, bloody nose, and that's the reason why you can't put them in the front seat with the airbag unless you have the uh, auto lock. Um, yeah. Plus, when we were growing up, you used to ride in the back of the pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. What's the age where kids don't have to sit in booster seats anymore in the back seat? Because I, I heard you have to be like seven or eight. It's eight or four feet nine. And that's, that's on your sheet because it always changes and you guys are gonna go home and what, what did Aaron say, 12 and 14? Um, so it's on there. But like I was telling Jennifer, just make sure that it's, the seat belt sits here as they're sitting and um, the seat properly. They're all the way back up there. So. Um, the good thing about car seats now, okay, when you get to your booster seats, you have your full back booster where it's basically like this, but with no five-point harness, just use the seatbelt. And then if they want to be cool and a little bit older, you can get the one without the back, so it's just the, the bottom. Friends can't see it anyhow. Keep them in their car seats, their booster seats, as long as you can. If you have a small, if you have a smaller stature child, we have some officers that probably should still be in booster seats. So just make sure they can't see it. Friends can't see it from outside the car. Keep them in it as long as you can, okay? So start that from day one, and. They won't think it's so bad. You're going to get it. I mean, I've got my, my youngest is seven right now. She's already on me about going to be in this seat. I have my own driver's license already. That's right. So I have to get in this seat. With her, I'm turning off SpongeBob until you're sitting there. Right. So, okay, let's, uh, we'll put it in forward facing. It's going to be kind of, we'll put it in with a latch this time. This one, um, real easy. This clicks on here. You guys can't see it. You can come up later. But all it is is a little metal bar. You can look in here. All you have to do is latch it in and tighten it down. And this is the same, same type thing. We would do the other side, push down, and pull on this as tight as you can to get where this only moves less than an inch right here. Same thing like Eric was talking about. Um, there is a limit, and you're going to have to look on your, um, most of them are about 45. Kid, and you have to take into account the weight for the seat. That's just not for the child. So the kid gets up to 45, 40 pounds, then we're, all, then we're going to do this and we would just repeat the same thing. We would uh, run them all the way through, latch it down, pull this all the way out, let it ratchet, and then push down and get it as tight as you can and do this. If you get to the point where you're by yourself and you can't figure it out, make an appointment, we can come down and we can tighten this down and make sure the kid's properly uh, installed in the car. So to finish up, key points, you can't do latch and seatbelt, it's one or the other, okay? Pull the seatbelt all the way out when you start, so it ratchets back. Use your own body weight to sit in that car seat or put your knee in while you're tightening that seatbelt. And you'll probably have a pretty darn good, or good success in selling your own car seat. I still recommend, if you put it in, make an appointment with us. Let us, look, let us take a look at it, it's, it's a free service. Come down between eight and five. Um, so, you can make an appointment for yeah, so. yeah, they're by any, any any CHP office, yeah. yeah. They, they are by appointment. However, if you have some urgent situation, go in. Hopefully, you can get it off. But the problem is not all of us are car seat techs. So we don't have a car seat tech available. I can tell you, you got to come back. But we try to have as many as we can on hand. Come in. We're a service agency. We're there for you. That's what we're supposed to do. So We get uh, paid for it. That's right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll go take a look at your car seat. Every once in a while, we go out there, and it's great. You walk out, and you go, wow, we're not doing anything. Pizza installed perfect. We'll go over just some of the basics with them. And then some, I'm not kidding, I've walked out and I've seen seat belts actually tied in a knot. And you're going, whoa, nope, that's not right. I'm glad you came to see. Okay. So again, um, to conclude our part here, please remember that friends, family, whoever it is, if they need a car seat, they're on hard times, there is no shame. You call us, there's no questions asked, we give you a free car seat. Okay, we'll get it installed for you. We want all kids on car seats. Um, Tether. Um, like I was talking about before, they have it uh, for rear facing. They also have it for forward facing. Most of the cars nowadays, you'll see like a little clip or you'll see like a little cover where you pop off. This clips on there and you tighten this down. And what this does, the seatbelt's here, keeps the bottom. And uh, 
back here. And when you look in here, um, I don't know if it'll say tether or if it'll say, it would probably be under child seats and it'll show on, most of them have all three seats um, and you're just gonna have to look at your vehicle and all you do is clip that in there, tighten it just like the bottom one and that's gonna keep this from coming forward. And so if they're properly in there with a the five point harness, the seats not moving, it, you know, you get in the accident, that's gonna keep the kids safe. Uh, another question that uh, a lot of people have are airbags. We kind of touched about the front airbags. A lot of airbags now are in the side. Um, this whole, the whole car turns into a cocoon, which is good. This is, these are more uh, technology that's going to keep us safe and also our kids. If the child seat is in the middle, obviously you don't have to worry about it. Usually just the curtain airbags. But if the seat's properly installed and the kids are inside their seat, they're not gonna get hurt with the airbags deployed. So uh, if you ever have a question of where your seat, uh, airbags are at, you can look on there, it'll say airbags. Sometimes they have little symbols and you can look up all along the side here. Maybe some are up in here, some are even back in here. It depends on which car it is. That's yep. So now, now Eric did the top latch. That doesn't move. You pull down here. Remember, we're looking for an inch. That's not moving. And that's a properly, yeah. Kid's not going anywhere. Yes. You said latch or seatbelt? Yes. Yes. I think I missed you recommend latch versus seatbelt? No. It, whatever one you feel most comfortable with. And then just remember, if you decide to use the latch system, look in the owner's manual because it's going to tell you what weight you can use it up to. Then you have to do a seatbelt. So this one right now is a properly installed forward-facing car seat. It really is the same for the rear. It's just making sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So we're gonna leave this one installed so you can come see it. You can see the little latch parts we were talking about. You can see the eye hook that's installed on this model on the bottom. Makes it really easy to hook it in and tighten it up. So we'll leave that in. I think she had a question yeah. in the back end. So, um, yeah, there's usually, sometimes it's on the floor, sometimes it's on the back of the seat. It's that little bar you had no idea what it was for on the back seat, that's what it's for. I think it was 1990, um, but it was, um, now all car seats after that date have to have it. So there's a question, like I said, he's gonna come in, we're gonna look at his car seat, uh, we're gonna look at his, uh, the car. Uh, another thing that we were kind of talking about bases, if you guys wanna, more bang for your buck, you can buy extra bases. And if you got, we don't have a base here, but it's the actual, you know, when you have the uh, rear facing one and you clip it and you can just pull it out. If you have multiple cars, you have grandparents, and uh, what you can do is you can get extra bases. You don't have to buy the full car seat. And then all you have to do, you can have it installed in grandma and grandpa's car, lock it in there, and you're ready to go. Here you go, you just put it in your car. So that's an idea as well. The last thing is the car seat comes with basically a, like a postcard you fill out, you send it to the manufacturer. They're studying these seats all the time. So you can buy a car seat today, and in six months, they're going to have a recall on that car seat. If you don't send that card in, you're not going to know about it. So make sure you fill out that card, all your information, send it into the manufacturer. So if there is something with that car seat they find that they need to make a, a switch to, that, that way you know about it. Okay? So our, uh, again, our office is Santa Monica Strong for California Higher Control. Give us a call, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. We have a Santa Ana office, we have a Westminster office, we have a to you. Come see us. All right? Any other questions? Because I know the most important reason why you guys are here for the raffle. So let's get uh, <laughs> Vanna White up here and she can uh, see who won. Yeah. It is the G. I Oh, by, by the way, did, is anybody in the market to buy a car? Because she can get you a great deal. This is. Uh, 36.9. <laughs> All right, and the lucky winner is Anwar. All right, you have two books, a little teddy bear, and a 
here another fifty dollar gift card. Thank you. Yeah, so thank nice. you. And we will send this video. We will email it to you. So all the questions that were on here, we will. And this was all the food, gifts, and everything. This was all Jennifer. She uh, deserves a round of applause.